Okay, um, welcome back. Um, this is our, our last um, student session. Uh, we will be wrapping up, however, directly after the session with an admissions Q&A, if you do have any questions to wrap up uh, with the Office of Law Admissions. Um, so this is our student life panel and uh, feel free, these students are gonna tell them about, uh, tell you about their experiences and feel free to ask them questions using the chat, or the Q&A feature uh, concerning their experiences uh, at the University of Baltimore School of Law. Uh, the panel is gonna be moderated by Assistant Dean Paul Manrique. He's our Assistant Dean for students. So with that, I'll turn it over to Dean Manrique. Thanks, Dean Zavratny. Welcome everybody. Um, coming to you live from Fells Point in Baltimore. Hopefully we have some folks that are from around this area as well. I wish we were in the law school. I know you probably heard that a lot of times uh, today, but just watching that little hype video before we got started made me miss being, uh, being back in the building and, and seeing all of our, our students and having access to that beautiful facility. Um, I want to introduce a couple folks that are with us today that are, that are current students. Um, again, my name is Paul Manrique. I'm, I'm the Dean of Students at the law school. I joined uh, last May and so over the last year, I've really um, tried to dive in as much as I can to the culture of this place. Um, and I'm excited to share some of that with you today. And we picked some of our premier student leaders to join in and donate some time on their Saturday um, to talk to you all. So really quickly, I, why don't we do a, a quick in, uh, introduction from uh, just the three panelists, and then we're gonna have a lot of, of questions that I'll direct towards them and, and probably a deeper introduction a little bit later on in the, in the presentation. So maybe Issa, can we start with you? And then we'll go Will and then Madison. Sure. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Issa. Uh, I am a 2L and uh, I'm originally from Cuba. I um, really love this school. I started out as a 1L and I got involved in student orgs right away and um, I'm still very involved right now. Hi guys, my name is Will Saucy. I'm a 2L, gonna be a 3L next year. I'm from Frederick, Maryland. I've, I've enjoyed coming to this school. I went to the University of Wisconsin for undergrad and hopefully one day I plan to be a district attorney a judge after I graduate, but we'll see where that goes. But currently I'm the SBA president, so I'm gonna be very involved in everything we do this year. Hi everyone, my name is Madison Butchness. I'm a current 2L, gonna be a 3L in, I guess, two weeks. Um, I'm very involved as well. Love the school, love everything about University of Baltimore. And I'll second Dean Manrique about saying that I wish we were in the building with you today. <laughs> All right, thanks everyone. I'm gonna see if I can do this. This is, this is a presentation probably number four for me this week. And I'm starting to get a little burned, but I'm excited to talk to all of you. So we're gonna go see if I can go share screen and then we'll hop into this PowerPoint that I have. There we go. Okay, um, so I want to talk to you all a little bit about some of the things um, that you'll you'll find when you come to UB um, from a student life perspective, and that that's really the the world um, that I live in and own at the at the law school. Um, and so I'll give you some of the highlights from from what that experience could look like for you while you're here, um, and then we'll really kick it over uh, to our to our student leaders. Um, we've got some questions that I've asked them to think about in advance of today's presentation. And then we've gathered some of the questions from, from each of you that were submitted um, uh, prior to today. Uh, and then we'll also have the ability to open it up and if anyone has any questions that they'd like, like to ask uh, sort of on the spot, feel free, uh, feel free to do that as well. All right, so our office is the, the, the Dean of Students. There are several folks that, that work within our office, which is sort of a wider, uh, a smaller part of a wider um, department known as the Office of Academic Affairs. And the mission of our office is really all about service to students. And so I think uh, when you come to, the, to school in the fall, um, and even if you communicate with us throughout the summer and spring, you'll notice um, that we're, we're very service oriented. Um, we kind of have a customer service mindset and we try and get back with folks and treat them um, as if they are our most prized possessions, which they are students we think of in a, in a way as our customers. So what do we do within, within our office? We do some academic advising uh, and support. We do all of the exams um, for 
the fall and the spring semester. We're managing those remotely this, uh, this spring, which is going to start in about a week's time, um, which we're excited about transitioning to that virtual world for exams. Um, we oversee student organizations. Uh, that's both clubs, student governments, and then co-curriculars like Moot Court and, and Law Review and Law Journal. Uh, student government is a part of that, SBA, which Will mentioned. Diversity Council, which was just launched uh, this year, which is an exciting new group of students that are focusing, focusing on inclusive, uh, inclusivity at the law school. The Honor Board and the Honor Code. So Madison is the incoming Honor Board uh, Chair. And uh, we, we handle any honor code violations through our office as well. And then we do a lot with events. And I'm going to talk to you about some of the, the cool events that we do at the law school um, that sort of benchmark uh, different points in time in the year and help us celebrate um, UN students. And then some of the wellness initiatives we've taken on, um, understanding that, that mental health and wellness is a primary concern, especially for law students who are trying to manage all the stresses of law school. Um, so I'm going to roll through a few of the things that, that are, were highlights from this past year. Student Bar Association, you can see our outgoing uh, president in the upper left-hand corner, Harita Joshi, and then incoming Will Sassi in the bottom right. There are a ton of activities that happen um, as a result of the, of the SBA, um, and you'll, you'll get to know them really well throughout the year. Um, some of the things that the SBA did uh, also included wellness activities, and so we did a lot um, in terms of mental health and wellness this, this year. This was a part of our Wellness Week in the fall, and this was one of our, our yoga sessions uh, that we hosted. Um, there were a ton that happened throughout the course of the year at different, uh, different parts of the law school. This is on that back um, sunken garden patio, which is one of my favorite places to hang out. Uh, there was an Orioles game uh, event that happened at the beginning of the year. That was where I got to know a lot of the, the current students and student leaders. Um, really fun night uh, and great weather for that. And then Day of Community was something that uh, happened for the first time this year as a part of orientation. And so any incoming 1Ls would experience that um, this year as a way to get out and see um, some of the great things that are happening in Baltimore with a lot of the public service connections that we have in the city. Now this one's an interesting photo, Bar Bowl Football. It's a, an event that we host each year at Pimlico. And I, I don't know if you can see or if I know you, you heard from Dean Weich this morning, that's him accepting a trophy from the graduating 3Ls. We had a faculty versus 3L uh, football game and the faculty came out on top and you can see me pre isolation mustache in the right hand corner there. Um, we might have had a few two L's and one L's that we cherry picked to be our stars, but uh, it was a lot of fun and a full full day of football out at Pimlico. And then one of the final events that we did in the spring semester before things um, shut down was the UB spy auction. And this is an event to raise money for students who are working in public service or public interest over the summer. And we auction off a ton of items in, in the law school, different things um, like lunches with faculty members. Dean Weich even, I think, uh, auctioned off a, a weekend at his vacation home or a week at his vacation home. Um, it's just a really fun event where faculty and students are able to interact and engage. So that's a little bit of a snapshot of some of the things that you can see from an activity standpoint. Um, and then a few things that we believe in the Dean of Students Office and I think the law school as a whole about the law school experience. And number one is that it's all about community. I think you'll find it at UB a really open, engaged, friendly, and welcoming community um, that will be excited to see you all as one else coming in this fall. And, and we'll be there with, with plenty of uh, advice and wisdom. Um, and, and interest in having you become a part of, of not only the law school community, but the individual activities that folks are up to. Second thing is that it's up to you to engage in that community when you get here. We'll have a full orientation uh, program designed to help you on board. Um, and it's really then kind of up to you to dive in and to take full advantage of the opportunities that you'll have presented. And at the end of the day, we want that law school for you to feel like home. And I had mentioned some of the awesome places that we have, just the physical space at the law school is unique to any other um, building that I've, I've ever seen for a law school around the country. Um, I had mentioned the, the sunken garden on the back, which is one of my favorite spaces. Up on 12, this is looking out on one of our, our amazing views, um, overlooking uh, looking south towards downtown in the city. There are all kinds of little nooks and crannies that you can find in the law school um, to study and, and hang out with your friends. 
And for me, this is my favorite um, and something that I'm probably missing the most are, are, are crazy stairwells that, that go uh, all over, um, all the way up to, to 12 and back down. And I usually typically try and walk those at least once a day um, so I can get some face time um, with all my favorite, favorite students and get some interaction and see what's going on. So um, just a little snapshot of some of the things um, that you'll see when you come into our physical space. I want to offer a few tips um, from our office before I turn it over to the students. Um, and this is something that you'll probably hear uh, echoed during orientation as well, especially when we have continuing orientation, which happens um, after you start classes and is a way to continue that on onboarding process. But six sort of quick tips for you when it comes to succeeding as a 1L at UB. And, and this one's probably my favorite. Um, this is an opportunity for you to embrace the inner nerd. I know from whatever your background you're coming from, um, whether you're coming straight from undergrad, maybe you're coming from years of work or some time uh, away from, from studies, this will be an opportunity to have a lot of folks with similar interests in one space with you where you can really nerd out about um, the excitement that you feel about learning, learning the law, learning the new language, getting to debate some of the things that maybe you experienced in, in a few classes in, in undergrad um, or in the working world. Um, but just imagine that group of almost 200 students that are all going to be excited about the same thing and going through that experience for the same time. So really embrace that um, and, and revel in that experience because it was one of my favorite favorites in law school. Adopting a growth mindset. I know this is um, something that you probably all have heard a lot about the work that Carol Dweck has done with, with growth mindset, the TED talk that she put out. Um, and a lot of things that we work on in the law school experience, especially for 1Ls, is resiliency. It's a new and challenging experience um, for everyone, no matter what, what sort of a background you're coming from, even if that's as a paralegal working at a law firm, it's just a different uh, experience for, for everyone and you're all sort of starting from square one. Um, and so really trying to adopt that mindset of, this is gonna be hard, I'm gonna struggle through this, um, but at the end of the day, it's gonna, it's gonna make me better and I'm gonna try and enjoy that process. Um, and it's something that we are always there to help with as the Office of Academic Affairs as, as you work through those, those struggles in your 1L year. Number three is staying true to yourself and especially when it comes to your study habits. I think a lot of times people worry about imposter syndrome. Do I belong here? I see how other folks are studying. Maybe I need to try and replicate that um, and, and modify the, what's been good for me. Um, and what I would really try and reinforce for all of you as you prep for summer leading into the fall is to think about what has worked for you to get you to where you are um, today to be about about to enter the the law school um, world and, and stick to that you can always modify and improve um, along the way but stick to what your core is and, and how you like to study um, the ways you like to study and especially what you like to do to keep yourself sane um, in your downtime and that's that's the fourth point which is finding time uh, to recharge in whatever way that is. You'll hear me talk about um, some of the, the tools that I think are useful for law students during orientation. A big part of that, um, especially just for a performance enhancement perspective, is meditation. Um, and I'll give you some, some tools when you come to law school um, where you can dive into that if it's something that's new to you and some, some free um, apps that we'll, we'll give you so you can get connected with, um, with meditation and mindfulness. But exercise and all the other things that are so critical, that doesn't stop when you get to law school and it's gonna help you succeed. Number five is getting involved. And this is where our office um, comes into play and where the student panelists will come into play. We have so many different student orgs and opportunities at the law school um, that you can, you can dive into while you're here. Um, those that are highlighted in, in that lime green are the, the two that I directly advise the honor board and the student bar association. Um, but we have close to 30 different uh, orgs that you can get involved with that really, if you look at the, the list, touch on any interest area that you could possibly have when it comes to the law. And if there's something on there that you were involved with with undergrad or, or a special interest area for you, um, we can also start student orgs um, and you can be the first to sort of leave that legacy as well. And then the final point, the sixth point I would leave you with is to ask questions. I know a lot of times students feel like they don't want to ask um, a dumb question or put themselves out there um, in front of a group. And that's something that you're going to be challenged with as a 1L in a large class right off the bat. Um, but you'll find, I think, the best attorneys that are out there and the best law students that are in 
law school are willing to ask not only the first question, but the follow-up questions until they really understand because what you're trying to do um, as an attorney is to, to mitigate risk and to really deeply understand every angle uh, of an issue um, before, before you move on to the next. So with that, I think that's probably a good time to kick it over to our current students. Um, and so again, I'm gonna reintroduce uh, Isabel, Will, and Madison. And I've asked them a few questions um, before today that, I, that I'll, I'll uh, have them go through sort of one by one. And I think we should probably do maybe the same, um, the same way that we did the introductions with Isabel, Madison, uh, or sorry, Isabel, Will, and then Madison. Um, and, and feel free to give your intro again. Um, the three questions that I, that I asked the panelists to think about uh, was to talk about one class, professor, classmate, or experience that has most impacted their time at UB Law. The second is to describe one positive characteristic about UB Law that either surprised them when they arrived or that they feel distinguishes our law school from others. And then the third was that if, if they could go back in time to the beginning of their 1L year or the summer as they're prepping for law school uh, to give one piece of advice to themselves, what would that piece of advice be? And so I'm gonna stop, share, and we'll go back to our panelists. And Isa, could we start with you on that one with, with that first question? And I've got them as a list too if you need a, a refresher for anything, but we'll start with, uh, with number one. Did you want me to introduce myself again? Yeah, go for it. Okay, so again, I'm Isa. I'm a 2L, originally from Cuba. Um, I first got involved um, my 1L year, and I got involved in LALSA, which is the Latin American Law Student Association. Um, I was also involved in WBA, and um, coming into my second year, I became president of LALSA, and now I'm the incoming editor-in-chief for Law Forum is one of the journals that we have here at the school. Um, so the second question was talk about my experience or do you want me to? Yeah, yeah. go for it. Okay. Um, so I would say that one class that really impacted my experience here was um, civil procedure slash ILS. Um, ILS is the writing portion of civil procedure. Um, and I had that with Professor Hubbard, who is awesome. Um, so that was really my first exposure to legal writing, and um, it taught me not only how to build a framework in my writing, but also how to use those skills on an exam. Um, so I ended up becoming a TA for that class the following year, and that experience also helped me improve my critical thinking skills. And aside from that, it was also just very rewarding, and it was a chance for me to be invested in mentor mentorship, which I really, really love. All right, we're gonna have you keep rolling here, Issa. So question number two, if you could describe one positive characteristic about UB Law, that either surprised you when you arrived or that you feel distinguishes it from other law schools, what would that be? So I think that um, the support of the faculty is one of the most positive characteristics about UB Law. Um, I came from a really big undergrad, came from UMD, and I didn't really get much time like one-on-one -on -one with faculty. And it's, as you mentioned in our presentation, like UB is very much a community, um, whether it's the professors, the LCDO, um, the administration, the faculty here really care about you um, and they're here for you. They wanna, they wanna know your concerns and they wanna help you. Great. And then uh, what about one piece of advice? So go back to Issa coming into to law school as, a, as an incoming 1L, um, or put yourself back in, in those shoes. What, would you, what piece of advice would you give yourself then? Um, I think um, believe in yourself. Um, uh, I'm the first to graduate from college in my family. And uh, I was really scared coming into law school. So the summer before I came to law school, I was, I was nervous, I wasn't sure if I could do it, and um, I didn't know if I could be successful here. But I learned that, yeah, like law school's tough, but if you put in the work, you'll do well and you'll be successful. Great, thank you. William, you're up, sir. All right, hey guys, so just to refresh, my name is Will Saucy, I'm a 2L, I'm from Frederick, Maryland. I went to University of Wisconsin for undergrad, and I'm like our wonderful dean, we had great times there. 
you know, went to law school while I did undergrad. Um, after graduation, I hope to again work for the state attorney or maybe be a judge someday. And in my time here at UB, I've been involved in Phi Alpha Delta, the fraternity on campus, the law fraternity. I was vice president of that. I also was involved a little bit in WBA and um, criminal law. And I was also involved in SBA. I was the director of PR and also helped kind of run the UB softball team, which we regrettably didn't get to go to Virginia this year for the big softball tournament. But hopefully next year when this hopefully settles down, we can go back. And I was also on trial team and in criminal clinic. Those have been the two huge experiences that I've loved. And lastly, right now, I am the SBA president for next year. So you'll be hearing a lot more from me over the next year on everything we do. And then I remember correctly, the first question was about a professor classmate or experience. Yep. I think the biggest class and professor that kickstarted my career here at UB is Professor Stone and criminal law. I always figured I wanted to do criminal law, but when I took the class that kind of pushed me into it and then he exposed me to the clinic by explaining what the clinics were. So that pushed me into, I knew exactly what I wanted to do and it gave me the exposure. He had us go to court one day and watch a criminal docket. And I realized, oh wow, that's something I want to do. And having those professors kickstart your careers by making you go to the court or go talk or go watch really helped me understand what was going on and realize that that's what I wanted to do. Um, the thing that I think separates UB from all the schools is the experience you get. A lot of schools have clinics, a lot of schools have trial ad, a lot of schools have trial teams, but we have all of it, and I think we have some of the best. Our trial team, Madison was on it with me. We did a really good job this year. Madison is a phenomenal litigator, so if you have questions on that, go talk to her. Trial ad is a class that you can take. It is a phenomenal experience to get up and talk in class and learn how to do a cross or direct closings and openings. But the biggest thing for me was criminal clinic. This semester, I got to go to Montgomery County twice a week and get up in criminal district court and try DUI cases or try a couple of assault cases or just run a simple traffic docket. I got to do that under the supervision of another attorney. That is huge. It gave me the confidence to get up there and speak. And even the first couple of times I stuttered, I fumbled. The judges were nice. My supervisor was nice. He walked me through it, told me how to improve. And that experience is something that's going to set you up for the real world so that way you walk into your first day of court as a lawyer, you know what you're going to do and how you're going to do it without having to stumble through. And my last piece of advice is preparation and breaks. Get ahead, take notes, and be prepared. But also when you go through, take a break. Go to a happy hour. Go play a video game. Go for a run. Read a book that isn't related to law school because you're going to burn yourself out if all you do is law school, law school, law school. It's going to hit you real hard, hit you real fast. That's what I have for you guys. Thank you. All right, Madison. Okay, so just a refresher. My name is Madison Butchness. I'm a 2L. I'm from Bel Air, Maryland, so just north of Baltimore. I went to East Carolina University in North Carolina for undergrad, and I plan on working in a general practice, which would mean that we would handle criminal, medical malpractice, personal injury, products liability, family, all of that stuff in one practice. Uh, at University of Baltimore, I am the chair of the honor board. I'm a current director on SBA. I'll actually be interviewing with Will for another director position soon, so fingers crossed. Um, I'm the associate comments editor on Law Review, member of the trial team, research assistant for Professor Bessler on Jewish Law Student Association, and I work in admissions. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Just some things that I do. Uh, I'm not going to choose a professor that made my experience great. I'm going to choose an actual event. My favorite event is the judicial reception, and it is at the end of September, beginning of October. And it's just the whole law school gets crowded with over 100 judges, clerks, some attorneys, alumni show up, and you just walk around and you meet so many people. The reason why it was the most rewarding for me, the 1L year, I had a family friend that was a judge and he was the only person I talked to all night. And then he introduced me to some friends and I got a little more um, optimistic about my ability to talk to a judge one-on-one. -on -one. 2L year, I actually took the list of judges that the LCDO uh, sent out ahead of time and I marked six of them that I wanted to talk to throughout the night. And by having those six in my mind, I made sure that I talked to them 
I made sure that I found them. And then they actually introduced me to other judges, their friends, their law clerks. And I, it's just an amazing experience. Yeah. Okay, so one positive characteristic. Um, I'm going to just double off of what Isabel and Will said, but the support at University of Baltimore actually does distinguish us from the Explore program with LCDO, where they're helping you find your 1L summer job, to the Law Scholar program with professors, where they award the Law Scholar position to someone who did really well in their class, and then they hold one-hour review sessions each week to just go over what the professor wanted you to get from the lesson. You can read and you can take notes in class, but the law scholar will sit there and be like, this is what they want, this is what they want to see on the exam. So those are just two examples. But University of Baltimore, everyone wants you to succeed. Um, everyone's working with you to get you to where you want to be in the future. And my advice to 1L Madison, um, was to not sweat the small stuff, uh, kind of what they said, but don't sweat if you don't find your perfect study group in the first month. I know as a 1L, I was like, who am I gonna study with? And you have this picture in your mind of these perfect study groups that you see in law schools on movies, but that might not work. Or you might end up studying alone and that's what works for you. So don't worry about that stuff right away it comes you may make friends you may make new friends and that's just literally the way of law school it's crazy experience um and well, going off what will said go to the happy hours take time off uh or don't and just go home and rest because a long day at law school is a lot for you and you need to just go home and sit on the couch and be like what just happened today um <laughs> And that's okay, because then you can come in the next day and tell the person sitting next to you and they'll probably go, I did the same thing. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. All right, thanks Madison. So now we're gonna dive into some of the questions that you all have asked. Um, and, and we've gathered some questions that were submitted in advance, but I also see that there are two questions that have been submitted uh, live since we started. So I'm gonna start with those. Um, so uh, Cassidy asks, and, and why don't we do this for our panelists? If you have a response um, that you are ready uh, to give, why don't you just give me a little hand raise and we know who we can, who we can go with and, and I'll call on you. Um, let's see, I see Dean Zavrotny says he would like to answer this question live. Okay, so I'm gonna read the question. I, I'm sorry, Dean Zavrotny, if I'm screwing up the way this is supposed to go. No, is you there... answer live, I just checked the box. Oh, gotcha, okay, thanks. Is there anything in particular students should or could be doing to prepare for law school? Madison. Nope, unmute is Madison, there you go. Got it, got it. <laughs> this summer before law school, I stopped working a month before law school and I did that just because Law school comes at you fast, and when it starts, it just starts going and doesn't stop. Um, so I took that month to relax. Also, in preparing for law school, I did have some conversations with family and friends, and you have to explain to them the stress of law school, what you're expected at law school, so that you don't have your family bothering you every five seconds while you're trying to read every night or your friends being upset because you say, I can't hang out. I have to study for a month of finals or something like that. So just taking the time to explain that to people in advance and processing it in your own head helps you prepare to start. Any other thoughts on that? All right, good, keep rolling. Um, the next question from an anonymous is as someone who is easily distracted by fun, are there any tips for students to manage their time efficiently and balance their social life with law school and internships, et cetera? And let me start with my advice that I always give to one else, and then I'll kick it over to all of these very involved law students who know how to manage, um, manage their time very efficiently. Um, what I always tell the incoming class of law students is there are gonna be a lot of opportunities to get involved in a lot of different things. Um, it's okay to skim the surface on that and just sort of see what you think is is cool. But I really suggest that people 
wait to dive deeply into leadership roles until at least the spring semester of their 1L year, um, just so you can sort of get your, get your bearings when it comes to the academic side of things first. And you're not gonna miss out on anything um, that, you, that you couldn't dive into as, as a spring semester 1L. Um, with that, I'll turn it over. It looked like Will, you had, you had some thoughts on that. Um, I too easily get distracted by something. So my, my biggest thing is I set a schedule. Like I set a hardcore, this is what I'm doing each day. Here's my big list. Here are, I'm going to break it up into each thing. Set the list and keep to that list. Don't break. If you have to break for something, readjust quickly. If something comes up that night where you can't do all of your readings, adjust. There's always ways to adjust. But set the schedule. And I did not get involved in anything until my spring year or even later in the fall take time adjust learn what you have to do and adjust to your new life and then start getting heavily involved there's nothing you're going to miss by over exerting yourself and joining a hundred different orgs pick a few orgs that you're really interested in and focus on them don't try to do pad wba balsa lalsa don't do all of them it's impossible we have way too many find a few and stick with them yeah isa yes yeah, so um in undergrad, I was a super, super involved person, um, the same way I'm involved now. So it was really, it was really tough when I came in to limit myself and say, no, you can't join every org. Um, so, and, and I ended up my first semester of 1L joining LALSA and I became the 1L rep. Um, so, and, and I think the good thing is that usually um, a lot of the organizations understand that you're a 1L. So even as a 1L rep, you're not given as much responsibility as someone who's like on the executive board. Um, so uh, I, I think that makes the process a little bit easier. And then also just as Will said, like keep a schedule. I'm a really big advocate of Google Calendar. Love it. You can use tabs to sort of organize everything, um, whether it's, you know, classes, you're, when you're going to be working, um, when you're going to have like different organizations, when you're going to be studying, all of that. You can use different tabs. I love it. And it's, it's helped me out a lot. All right. Next question, again, from Anonymous. Silly question, but what does the average law student wear to class? This is a great question and one that a lot of people don't talk about. And I got to tell you, when I came into the first week of class, in the fall, it was so funny to see people that were very professionally dressed for class every day. And that's fine, that is fine. But by the end of the semester, those same folks were wearing sweatpants and baseball hats backwards and had changed uh, considerably. But I'll kick it to this group to answer um, and maybe take it from the perspective of an incoming 1L and, and how that might progress as you go into your 2L and, and 3L year. So we'll it's okay, I'll take this real quick. Um, as you see, I'm professionally, semi-professionally dressed. There are still many professionally dressed. I can tell you from being in school with these guys, we don't dress like this when we come to school. I'm always in jeans and then maybe a sweater or maybe a sweatshirt, maybe a polo. And that's as fancy as I'm going to get unless I'm going to a judicial reception or something where I need to have a suit and tie. Other than that, most people will wear yoga pants, leggings, jeans, something comfortable just because it's easier to study how you're most comfortable, what you're most going to wear. Unless you need to go for trial at team or trial where you have to dress up and practice the way you would do it in court, come comfortable. If you are comfortable wearing a suit, go ahead and rock it. Kudos to you for being able to wear that every day. I couldn't wear a tie every day to school. I'd be just sitting there in class suffering, but people adjust, people change throughout the year. And I'll agree with everything Will said. Pretty much, if you come to class in that full suit, everyone's going to ask you, hey, do you have an interview today? Because it's so different. Um, I did start as a 1L and I was like, this is a professional environment. So my nice clothes was jeans and like a blouse. But then I think a month into it, I was like, okay, uh, yoga pants, leggings, shorts, and that's okay. <laughs> yeah, concur, okay. Uh, it looks like from our live questions, that was our, our last. So let's go to some of the, the pre-submitted questions. It sounds like earlier in the day, there were, there were already some questions about this, but, but I think these are two really good questions, sort of a one-two punch. First one is um, for out-of-state students unfamiliar with the city of Baltimore 
in what areas do law students uh, typically live? And then a follow-up to that would be, um, what apartments are most popular for law students? Um, so, and that might be closer to law school, it might be, might be otherwise. So let's go with, first of all, where, it, what areas, if we're talking about in the city, what areas would law students typically live? And then what are some, uh, some popular apartments for law students maybe around the law school? Issa, go ahead. Um, I'm not sure I know all of them, but I know Fed Hill is a is a big one. Um, also, the Midtown Mount Vernon area, um, and in that Midtown area, there's the Vitz. Um, I feel like a lot of people live there. I can't think of all of the apartments on the top of my head. There's one other one, and I know it's by the train station. I can't remember the name Sutton of it. Place. What is it? Sutton Place. Yes, the Sutton Place. <laughs> That's what it is. Um, but yeah, that there's definitely there are definitely a lot of options for student housing. And just to just to clarify with that, the Midtown Mount Vernon area is the are the two sort of neighborhoods that are either the law school is right on the border of both of those. So a lot of times folks will use the use those interchangeably. Good. Anything else? Yeah. Okay. Um, wait. Oh, go ahead, Madison. Yep. So Shauna did share there's a housing list on the admitted students website. Um, but where the school is located, there are apartments surrounding the school. During my 1L year, I did live at the Fitzgerald. It's attached to the garage. And I chose to do that because 1L year, you're spending the most time at school, or that's what I thought. So I wanted to be close and I didn't wanna to have to stress about anything other than my schoolwork. So that is a very common thing for people to live very close to the school. And then for, there's a follow-up question from Jessica. For students living in Federal Hill, do most students take public transportation or do most students drive and park near the school? I would say most students drive and park near the school. Uh, and I just said Fitzgerald Garage. Uh, that's where most people get their parking pass and you sign up. It's $300 for the whole semester, unlimited parking. So even if you're not going to school, but you're going to a Ravens game, park at the Fitzgerald and Uber to the game. Um, it's very convenient garage. It's like five to eight minute walk to the school depending on your speed and it's very safe. Great. Um, another follow-up. Do any do any of you live with other students and how did you if so how did you find your roommates? Um, if none of you do maybe I'm sure you know folks that that do how, do, how would they have matched up with one another? Any suggestions on that? Will, go for it. I see no one's jumping at this, so I'll answer as best I can. I do not live in a school. I do not live with anyone other than my fiance. I live out in Frederick, so I commute. I will say before I get into the next part of the question, don't be afraid to commute to school. If you don't want to live in the city, there are great areas outside of Baltimore you can live and commute in. There's tons of places to live, so look around if you don't want to live in the city, but Madison is right. You're going to be a 1L. Live near the school if you want to spend a lot of time studying because that hour commute for me one way took a chunk and I countered by recording classes and playing it back. But from what I understand, people can f you can find roommates on the current students page. That's where a lot of people post, do you need a roommate? I have this place or is anyone looking for a roommate or the admitted students page connect there. Other than that, if people were still looking when they got to school, they would just post things everywhere. But to my understanding, there are people that did meet and didn't work out and they readjusted but those are the two places I know people are meeting is the current students and the admitted students page on Facebook. Go ahead Issa. Um, so my first year I lived in the Midtown Belvedere apartments which are super close um, to the school and uh, I filled out a roommate form and I ended up being matched with another law student who was a 3L um, which was really cool because she kind of mentored me and helped me out trying to figure out a lot of the law school stuff. Um, I also live now currently at the Mount Royal, um, so, and that's literally across the street. Uh, so I, I find that living close to the school is really helpful uh, just because if anything's happening, I'm just getting up and heading to school and I can be there in like five minutes. Um, so that's, that's really helpful. And does anyone have a general sense? There's another question about, uh, costs. Does anyone have sort of a general ballpark? Obviously that's going to 
depend on where you live and the size of the apartment and, and amenities and all that sort of thing. Um, but what, what would you say is sort of a general uh, ballpark for apartment um, living in, in the city? So that person also said living alone at Sutton Place. I know you can get a studio for a nine hundred to a thousand dollars a month, and then at the Fitzgerald, it's more pricey. You're looking at fourteen hundred a month, fifteen hundred. It might be more now, um, but it's definitely the quality of the apartment that you're paying for. Agreed. Okay, great. Well, let's switch over um, away from um, sort of the living side of things to some of the questions that we have about the academic side of the experience. Um, how about, there's a great question about co-curriculars, and I don't know how much folks have gotten into this today, but typically when we're talking about co-curriculars at the law school, we're talking about um, moot court, we're talking about the journals, we're talking about trial team, um, and so a little bit different than your student org experience. Um, but from any anyone that has been a part of that, what did the um, what did the competition look like to get into um, that kind of that kind of a world? So for trial team, how, did you have to apply for it? Did you try out? Same with moot court, and then from from the journals. So well, I think we have a little bit of everything on this one. Um, so for trial team, Will and I did have to try out. We saw each other on the day of tryouts, both talking to an invisible classroom. <laughs> um, but that's what you have to do to prepare for the tryout. And you prepare an opening statement and questions for a witness that's a member of the trial team. And then you do it in front of them. And you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be perfect for trial team, moot court, anything. They just want to see if you're willing to put in the practice uh, to prepare for a competition. Yeah, Issa. So uh, for journal, there's a write-on competition with, that happens at the end of your 1L year. Uh, usually you get a, a weekend before after your finals and then write-on process begins. Uh, write-on process involves a case note and an editing exercise. Um, everything's explained throughout the, throughout the year and there, there are orientations so that you know what's going to be happening. You have 10 days to complete your case note and your editing exercise. And then uh, there are certain thresholds that you have to meet. Uh, for law review, I know you have to have at least a 3.2. And for law forum, you need to have a 3.0. Um, and then each journal weighs uh, GPA, a case note, and your editing exercise with different percentages. And then real quick, Issa, can you just clarify, uh, there's a question about the difference between forum, journal, uh, law review. Yeah, sure. Um, so we have two journals, Law Review and Law Forum. I would say the main difference is that Law Forum is Maryland specific. Uh, we focus primarily on Maryland law. Although you do have opportunities to write about federal cases, you're always going to bring it back to Maryland law. Whereas Law Review, you can write about anything you want, um, int anything international or, or any anywhere else in between. Great. Okay, um, it looks like there are a couple of questions about attendance and getting to class. Um, so Perry and Megan <coughs> ask similar questions. Um, what if you have to miss, miss a class? How does the professor handle that? Does that mean you would be disadvantaged? Um, and sort of a follow-up to that is, for an evening student commuting from outside the city, are professors typically understanding about uh, commuting and commute time? So Will, you're a, you're a commuter. Why don't you want to take a shot at that one? Yeah. Um, so for commuters coming in from outside, and I assume you're even soon because you work during the day, professors are lenient. I took a bunch of evening classes my tool year in this semester, other than my litigation process class. All of my classes will be after 6 p.m. So they are willing to give you a little bit of a break if there's an accident, if President Trump comes to town and the road's shut down because everything's busy, or if some other event happens, they're willing to give you some slack if you do have to miss a class you don't need to tell them but get the notes from someone find someone that can back you up say a friend who can show you the notes they have and then when they miss you can share your notes just have that backup system because in, in law school you do get some misses because life happens you can't make a class because you have a doctor's appointment you can't make a class because your car broke down and you had a terrible day 
So plan those misses if you can, don't waste them, use them wisely and have a backup plan, have a friend to take notes for you. I'm already planning for when and if I miss a Civ Pro 2 class, who's gonna back me up on those notes because that is going to be a very difficult class for me to take and I'm looking forward to it, but I have a couple friends who are gonna take notes when I miss it and I'll do the same for them. Uh, I'm just going off a will. Classes are also recorded on Panopto, so each classroom has a camera. Some teachers do not always record their classes, so that's when I would advise emailing them and just shooting them a quick email. I don't feel well today, or had a family event, had to go out of town, and they'll specifically record that class for you. Yeah, Isa. I just wanted to add that. Um, a lot of these things are situational and are going to depend on your professor. So just be aware, you know, when we're, they're reviewing the, the syllabus, like what, what really matters to them because they, they, will cover, they will cover that and you will know, okay, this is a professor that you really have to try your best to be on time and not miss any class because they're going to notice. Yeah, that's a, I think that's a great point. Um, uh, another question about housing, are there any areas um, in Baltimore for housing to avoid for safety reasons. I, I would say with this one, I would just, you can do some pretty basic Google searches for best neighborhoods in Baltimore. Um, I'm coming from, from Chicago where it's very much full neighborhoods are, you know, what to expect for a neighborhood They have their sort of <coughs> unique characteristics um, and geographies. I think Baltimore, it can sometimes be a little bit more street by street. And, uh, but there are general neighborhoods that I think a lot of folks feel very very comfortable in for the most part. And I would just do a, a Google search for um, for best neighborhoods in Baltimore, safest neighborhoods in Baltimore. I don't want to call any any out because uh, like I said, I think it really is dependent on on the individual streets, but that'll give you some perspective on um, on, on areas to avoid and, and the big areas that, that we've already discussed, the, the Fed Hill, the Mount Vernon, uh, Midtown. I'll give a little plug to my fels. Fells Point and Canton neighborhood down by the water. We've got some students and, and some deans that live down, down around here too, but um, there are a lot of other good ones. Just, just do some searching on that and ask, ask fellow students um, where they're living. Um, I'll also say I'll add on to the class lecture piece. I think given the fact that this spring we've had to go completely virtual, um, our faculty members now are very well versed in, in what this looks like. And so I think those faculty that maybe were a little bit less likely um, to use Panopto or record in the past have now been forced to learn how to do that. And I think for, for the most part, it was mostly just uh, people that were a little bit uncomfortable with, with the technology who now have become um, experts in that, in that world. So, uh, so I think that's a really a good thing for, for this incoming class of one else. Um, it looks like we're getting pretty close uh, to time, but there were a few other questions submitted in advance um, that I wanted to touch on and then, and then we'll get ready to wrap up. Um, a student had asked, aside from tuition and fees, what should prospective students take into consideration when financially planning for 1L year? So what are some of the other things that, that you all had to, um, to think about when you got to law school in terms of costs and expenses? Madison, are you raising your hand there? <laughs> um, well, like I said, a parking fee. Uh, pretty much no matter where you live, you're going to want to get a Fitzgerald or Maryland Avenue parking garage. And those are <clears throat> both 300 for the whole semester. Books are very important to buy or to rent. I rent all mine. You can look on the University of Baltimore Facebook page and a lot of students will post like if we're selling our books to one else. And then we also have a book catalog, which didn't Bar Association, SBA, they put that together. I'm sure we'll email out the link sometime this summer, but essentially it's an Excel sheet with books that all of us are selling and SBA decided to be the middleman and they're gonna put you together to help find those books and get them sold. So definitely books, parking, locker. Uh, University of Baltimore, we have lockers, $35 for the year. Get a locker, it's so important. I use my locker more to hold my lunch or if I have to bring a dinner than really for books because I take every book home. Um, but also when there's a judicial reception or a networking event, you want somewhere to put your backpack. You don't want to be walking up to a judge with your parka winter coat and your backpack and shaking their hand. You want to be able to put stuff away for events in a safe locker 
and University of Baltimore has plenty of them. So. And let me add a quick uh, plug to you for, for the, um, the downstairs on the lower level of the law school just below that sunken garden. We actually have two um, sort of shower changing room uh, spaces that are pretty underutilized by students, but it's a part of sort of the uh, the, some of the green benefits of our, of our law school was designed for anyone that was going to be commuting um, by bike and needed to to kind of get showered up before before class. And I know some students have used that um, as as a way to change for workouts and that sort of thing to get back um, into class afterwards. But also to change for if you're going to be meeting a judge and you you don't want to be dressed up in a in a suit all day. That's that's something that you can take advantage of. Um, Isa or Will, any anything else on cost that uh, that you want to touch on? Will, go ahead. So I will double down with Dima Enrique on that. I've used that the showers a few times because I wanted to go for a run and I didn't want to go across to the gym, which had restricted hours. So I used the gym or the shower there. It's nice, it's simple, it's clean, it's good to use. But other costs that I would advise counting for, some orgs do have fees, so account for that. With those fees, you get access to their outland banks, their events, their other op great options that they have. And then it's also, um, have a Ufi, have a little money that you're ready to use for a spa day, a book day, a game day, whatever what you want to do, have a day fee where you can go and spend 50 bucks on whatever you want for that day as a nice mental break. Like go to the O's game, go to a Ravens game, go to the bar, go sit in a library, just go do something that is money for you set aside ahead of time that you're ready to use on that day. That's a good one. Okay, let's do uh, the last two questions here. Um, so there was a, a student that asked about uh, mentorship, mentorship programs, and sort of what to expect. And I know Dean Zabrotny had asked me to touch on um, what we're thinking for, for orientation, uh, given the current shutdown situation and what that might look like for the fall. Um, I, this past year was my first orientation um, at UB, and we've got a whole host of things that are gonna be rolled out as, as sort of new additions and new initiatives for orientation um, for this year for your incoming class, regardless of whether that takes place in person or if, if that takes place in a virtual environment. And I'm sure you've heard many times today that, that we're um, sort of as responsive as we can be to those questions, but a lot of, a lot of that just depends on um, what we're able to do in terms of what, um, what uh, the governor allows at that point when, what we can do in terms of gathering folks together. But we're gonna have an, an awesome orientation uh, either way. And there's a new mentorship program that will be rolled out for, um, for this fall that will involve current students uh, who, are, who are upper level students um, who will be helping to lead smaller groups of, of incoming students. And there, there are gonna be some fun things that go along with that that I don't want to, uh, to give too much away yet, but come in the fall and you'll see what it's all about. And it's gonna be, it's gonna be great. So, um, so that, hopefully that answers that question for you. And I know um, a, a lot of the folks that are involved with student orgs, et cetera, are outstanding mentors for the, the new people that are involved with their organizations. Um, and I think the law school is a place that just fosters that as a whole. Why don't we end with a question um, from Tucker Mack um, that hopefully each of you can address. Um, which I think is sort of a good final question for, for this group for the day. What made each of you choose UB over other schools? Issa. Um, so I think the biggest thing was the sense of community that I felt at UB. Um, I knew that I wanted to be in a space where I, could, I, was going, I was going to be challenged, but I could also grow and I was going to be supported and UB is all of that. Um, also, I knew that I wanted to practice in Maryland or in the DMV area, and UB is a great school for that. There are, they have so many networks, the LCDO will always work with you. Um, no matter where you wanna be, like they'll work with you and they'll support you in every way. All right, thanks. Will. So I had been in Wisconsin for seven years and I wanted to come home. So I picked UB in the sense that it was going to be home for me, but UB was more than just me coming back to Maryland. It was me picking my home for the future because I felt comfortable here. I felt that I would go to grow and learn in a great environment. And UB is such a tight-knit community across the state and the region. There are so many judges, so many attorneys that are like, oh, you went to UB? Great. I went there. Let me talk with you and work you and mentor you a little bit. I have met 
18 judges that have all been UB grads in the past two years that I've been here. And I know there's hundreds more across the state. So just that camaraderie we have, we're UB, we're in this together. We will work with you and we will build a great law school mall community for all of us. Well said. How about you, Madison? Um, so I agree with what both of them said. It's the community and the support and you actually feel it when you come to an event, whether it be this summer, um, the workshop or 1L orientation, everyone's there to help you, to meet you and they're all happy because it's new students and going off what Will said, one third of judges in Maryland are actually University of Baltimore graduates and the alumni from our school, alumna, are unlike any other because they want you to, to succeed, which makes University of Baltimore succeed. And it's just this snowball effect of everyone helping each other and finding where you should work and where you should intern and all that stuff. Um, also, if you, have the, if you had the ability to check out our school, our building is amazing. Most law schools are, you know, wooden hallways, wooden doors, and we have, window walls and you know light is coming from everywhere so even if you're you had a rough night up all night studying you're walking down the stairs and lights coming in and it just really brightens your mood honestly the building is amazing to be in agreed all right so with that we'll wrap up i just want to say thank you again for everyone that attended thank you to our panelists it's good to see your faces um, and, uh, and I'll kick it back over to, to Dean Zavrotny, but I hope we see all of you in the fall. I think UB is an outstanding community, um, and we're looking forward to having you join it and, and push it forward into the future.